The Warp Stabilizer in Premiere and After Effects is a very powerful tool to stabilize shaky footage. But sometimes the results can also look awful and you can get this wobbly jello effect. But as you can see here, I managed to stabilize this footage based on another method inside After Effects. I've used motion tracking to lock onto a specific part in the video and then used that position data to stabilize the video. In this video, I'll show you step by step how to do this in After Effects, right after the message of our sponsor, Envado Elements. If you want to improve your video editing quality or edit faster, then definitely check out Envado Elements. They offer thousands of high quality video editing templates for apps like Premiere Pro and After Effects. Besides video editing templates, they also offer stock videos, music and sound effects, fonts and much more. And this is all included in one single subscription. And that's why I think that Envado Elements is a must have for every content creator. If you want to give them a try, then please use my temporary discount code that you can find in the video description. This way you can try them a month for a couple of dollars. Ok, now I'm going to start here by showing you how I stabilize this clip by using tracking in After Effects. Inside After Effects, I've already got the clip that I want to stabilize ready on the timeline. And as I mentioned, we're going to use the tracker panel, which you can find here in my setup. But if you can't find it, you might need to look into the window menu and make sure that it's enabled like this. Ok, back to the tracker panel and in here we're going to enable stabilize motion. Then make sure you've got the right clip selected at motion source. And for track type, we'll select Stabilize. And at first, we've only got the option for position selected like this. And in the option menu, I've got Stop Tracking if confidence is below 80% selected. This, simply said, means that After Effects will pause the tracking when it's not 100% sure about the position of the tracker. And this will provide you the opportunity to correct the position if needed and then continue tracking. I believe that by default the Adapt feature is selected, but that's not what I prefer. Anyway, you'll see later on what I mean. Let's close this option menu and now it's time to position the tracker. First I will move the playhead to the beginning of our selection and then I'll zoom in by using the mouse scroll wheel so we can position the tracker. In this case we want to point the attention or focus on the plane in the center. So we'll use a point with some nice contrast here at the front of the plane for our tracking. As you can see, the tracker point consists of two boxes. The smaller inside box defines the element that we're going to track and the outside box represents the area that we're going to track. If needed, you can adjust the size, but keep in mind that if you make this larger, then the tracking will be slower. Anyway, our tracking point is positioned, so now we can start tracking. We can do this by clicking on this button here. And now After Effects will start analyzing the position of the tracker frame by frame, as you can see here. So far it's looking good, but if After Effects would run into trouble, then it would pause the tracking, as I mentioned before. You can see the progress of the tracking here and here, so we'll just need to give this a couple of seconds and then we're done. And by the way, we can also manually interrupt the tracking by hitting spacebar. Ok, it seems that the tracking has now finished without any significant errors. This means that we can now hit apply in the tracker panel to apply the tracking data to the video. And then you need to click on ok in this pop-up and now the data is applied to the video. If I open up the transform properties on the timeline, you can see that all the tracking data has been applied to the anchor point. So if I now scrub to the timeline, you can see that the video will move around based on the position of the anchor point. But as you can see here, this now means that we also have got some space that we need to fill in. And in this case, we can do this by simply scaling up the video. Of course, we don't want to scale up too much because we might lose some video quality. So I need to find a point where it's just enough to cover the space on the side. It seems that this one will do. Now it's time to have a look at the before and after. Now in the final part we're going to add a second layer of stabilization. And to do this, we first need to pre-compose the layer on the timeline. So I'm going to right click and then select pre-compose. Then choose the option to move all attributes to the new composition and click OK. And then we go back to the tracker panel and again select stabilize motion. But this time we're going to select rotation instead of position. And as you can see, this will give us two tracker points that we need to place in the frame. And again, we can now look for some high contrast points. In this case, I'll go for the rocks on the right side here. And for the left point, I'll take the front of the plane again. I will also increase the search area and now I'm ready to click on this button to start analyzing. 
And now After Effects is going to analyze rotation movement based on these two points. We need to wait a couple more seconds, so this might be a nice moment to hit the like button. As you can see, After Effects now stopped analyzing, and that's based on the option that we selected earlier, the option to stop analyzing when confidence is below 80%. So this means that we need to help After Effects a little by placing the tracker on the right position for the current frame. You can hit page up or page down to move a frame backward or forward. So in this case, I'll go one frame back and then move the tracker point to the right position. And after that, we can hit Analyze Forward again and then After Effects will continue analyzing. And once the analyzing is finished and it all looks good, you can hit the Apply button here. And now, as you can see here, all the tracking data has been applied to the video as rotation keyframes. And if I now scrub to the timeline, you can see the rotation that is happening on the video. And as a result of that, we've also got some empty space that we need to fill in, like this one at the right top or in the left bottom corner. And again, we can fix this by increasing the scale value. 107 should be enough, let's scrub to the timeline to see if we've got everything covered. Okay, that seems to be enough. One more final tip, if you notice some glitches or tracking issues after you've applied stabilization, then you can simply select these keyframes and then hit the delete key to remove them from the timeline. And then After Effects will figure out what to do with the movement of the tracker between these two keyframes. Okay, now it's time to look at the final result and also do a bit of comparison. That's it for this After Effects tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did then please like the video or leave a comment below. I would really appreciate that and it helps me to grow my channel. If you want to see more similar After Effects tutorials then check the video that I'll link at the end of this one. And finally I want to say thanks a lot for watching and I wish you all a wonderful day.